go. Northwestern at Penn State Saturday College Football. Welcome to pregame.tv. He's Brian Leonard. He's Marco D'Angelo. And I'm Scott Spritzer. Penn State opened up a three and a half point favorite. They are currently a three point favorite in Happy Valley hosting the upstart Northwestern Wildcats. And Brian, I think Bill O'Brien is the right man for this Penn State job. They're, this is the calm before the storm. There's no doubt about that. They're going to face a tough seven to ten years coming up. But the fact that this team started 0-2 and, and the way they lost to Ohio, uh, just totally out of it in the second half of that game being worn out not only from the physical play of the Bobcats but also from the emotion of the opening game and then going on the road and losing in the closing seconds to Virginia you got to give this team and this coaching staff a lot of credit for winning three straight games at the same time you got Northwestern who's now 5-0 and straight up and against the spread they've jumped into the top 25 but what I want to ask you is neither one of these teams has played an overly difficult schedule Northwestern kind of the flavor of the week Penn State getting some notes right now and some ink as far as how how people are starting to look at this team on the East Coast. Which team do you feel is for real? I think Northwestern's for real. Uh, normally, when you take a look at the Northwestern, you want to take points with Northwestern. Sure. You want nothing to do with them as a favorite. This year, they're not only five and zero; oh, they're covering as a favorite in this in this situation. And Penn State is a team; it's a good story. I mean, everybody's rooting for Penn State. Uh, none of these kids deserved anything that's going on. But the problem is, everybody's keeping an eye on Penn State. They go, man, they're playing pretty good ball. They're playing pretty mm -hmm. good ball. Nobody's paying any attention to Northwestern, and yet the line open three and a half is being bet down. That tells me where the right side is. Yeah, and Marco, I've been involved in a couple of Penn State games. We had Ohio in week one, and they, you know, we saw what they yeah. did. They started out well, but they got beat up. They got smacked in the mouth a little bit in the second half, and they were unable to respond took Penn State against Illinois, and that was a play against Illinois more than anything else. I've got against them now a couple of times, had Arizona State also against the Illini, but what Penn State has done is they've not made costly mistakes on the field during this three-game run, and in fact, they now have a 10, a plus 10 turnover margin on the season, uh, and when you consider some of the best players transferred from the school elsewhere before the season started, you do have to give this team a lot of credit, but because they don't have their top skill people because there are a lot of second and third stringers having to play a lot right now for Penn State due to the transfers. I don't really think you can expect this turnover margin to keep going week after week, especially against a team like Northwestern. Oh, I got to agree with you, and you absolutely took my thunder here from what I had. Yeah, I'm going to keep the sheet over the here because you're copying my stuff. <laughs> but uh, the situation here, the other thing with, and I agree with everything you said, obviously, but Penn State coming in, I think they had a couple milestones when they looked at this season that really Realistically, the first win they got was going to be big because it's the first win in the post Joe Patena sure. era. The second milestone would be their first Big Ten win since all this happened. Now, we've had both of those accomplished now with last week. I think this is where they have a little bit of, they feel a little bit self, you know, self satisfied. I think you're going to see a flat Penn State team. I know that sounds odd with a team that's won a few games in a row, but just like you said, Northwestern's a team that's playing well, that's flying under the radar that nobody's talking about. And Penn State this year is trying to play more. It's not Penn State football with Joe Paterno, that's for sure. They're throwing the ball. I mean, you know, Joe's probably rolling over in his grave watching the, the way that uh, he's got the, more things to worry about than how his football team is. Yeah, this, this is so. true. But this is not what we're used to with Penn State. But now they're going to be taking this new style against a team that does throw the ball a lot and does spread it around in a very balanced offense. I think Penn State's going to have trouble stopping Northwestern this week. I think the wrong team's favorite, in my uh, opinion. It wasn't bad for me stealing your thunder. Well, you know, you know, that's know. pretty good analysis. But anyway, <laughs> that happens when you've been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, as far as this game is concerned. You're old, by the way. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm basically saying. I guess whoever sits in that chair, it's just a prerequisite. <laughs> <laughs> Something to do with the piece but anyway Brian I'm going to tell you about this game I have to play even though I, I believe that Northwestern's the right side and this is your best bet but I have to always throw that caveat in there because when we're handicapping games you want to see if there's reasons to go against the play that you first come up with now one of the reasons that almost did it for me is the Northwestern passing game or lack thereof they're averaging about 30 passes per game through five games they've only got three touchdowns and they've got two interceptions that scares me a little bit about a team that's got three touchdowns while they're at it for the season while they're averaging 30 passes per game. Does that bother you at all in this game? If you're running the ball successfully, you don't need to pass as much. I mean, past Northwestern teams basically had to pass to sure. stay in the game. That was their only chance. Uh, they're not a physical team. The Big Ten just wasn't a good matchup for them, so that's how they were able to compete. I mean, when you've you got the small amount of players going out for the football team that you have at Northwestern compared to Ohio State, Michigan, I mean, you got to go about it a different way. 
ye of the full head of hair on the panel, this is your best <laughs> bet. Who you got? That's probably the nicest thing you said about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the points here with Northwestern. Take a look at what Penn State has done this year. I know they've, they've been in the public eye and they've done very well. Open up the game. Huge emotional game against Ohio U. The emotions ended. Second half, the better team came out. Ohio wins. Virginia. Virginia's yet to be at or cover against an FBS school all season long. Navy, same thing. Have not won a game, have not covered a game. Take a look at Illinois. The only time they, they covered a game was the opening game against uh, Western Michigan, plus three turnover margin. Without that, I don't think they do it. I think Penn State's a little bit overrated right here. There you have it. Brian Leonard's best bet is Northwestern, and I can't go against them on this one. They're getting three points as we speak about this game in Happy Valley. For Brian Leonard, for Marco D'Angelo, I'm Scott Spritzer. Stick around all weekend long. More college football, more NFL. You're watching pregame.tv.